Ruel. Rebecca. It's time. Yes, I love this time. It's time for another episode of Good Looking Kickstarters. Woo. Fireworks. Woo. Confetti. You got all that, right, Matt? <laughs> Well, what's new? All kinds of new stuff happening, Becca. Let's take a look at the first game that caught my eye on Good Looking Kickstarters. It is Three Sisters. Three Sisters is a roll and write game, and this one is about backyard farming. And I was wondering about the name, Three Sisters. It really caught my eye. I was like, what does Three Sisters have to do with uh, backyard farming? Chekhov. Uh, it's apparently named after an indigenous agricultural technique, which is called companion planting. And uh, Three Sisters in, is in that mo mold of um, a little chunkier or thinkier roll and write games. Uh, this one, you have crops, fruits, flowers, and hives all interconnected on these little mini tracks on your score sheet. So you're rolling, unlocking uh, bonus actions and points, and it's what I like to call combo-tastic. It's all about those combos and stuff, and it's for one to four players, about 45 minutes or so, so it's not your typical, like, Yahtzee, like, simple um, uh, roll and write type game, but it's got a little more meat on its bones, and one cool thing, Becca, I have to point out, the Kickstarter exclusive includes a tractor meeple. <gasps> How do you even go about designing a tractor meeple? Oh, I guess it's, yeah, it's just got wheels and it, it's just a tractor. Yeah. That's a very attractive tractor. It is a good looking tractor meeple. I mean, I love the theme, you know, companion planting and farming um, and anything to do with food I, I'm down with. So this is talking about food from the get go and I'm all about three sisters. Hold on, Ruel, I'm getting a message. I'm getting a message. I have to tell you about the next game. Ghost Rider by Mary Flanagan from Resonum Games. This game, you have two teams. There is a spirit on each team and there are mediums on each team, up to three mediums and one spirit on each team. Basically, any game where you divide into teams of two and have a sort of clue giver and then the clue receivers, it's one of those, which I am such a big fan of. They do a really good job of giving you table talk between people who are at your game night and very possible to play over Zoom, as is important for all of our uh, current gaming needs. I really, really, really want to play this game because um, it has sort of this like macabre theme, which is my jam. It reminds me of Mysterium meets Decrypto. And if you haven't played Decrypto, you need to. It's like Codenames on Crack, but like in a good way. This is, yeah, Mysterium is a really great game. I think this is along those lines of really cool um, gameplay and where you can play it with uh, non-gamers as well as gamers that you, um, both audiences will appreciate. So the Ghost Rider looks fun. To dig a little more into the actual rules, you are going to pull a card from the deck. It's gonna have a list of four objects. The spirits are going to decide which of the objects they're trying to communicate to their mediums. And each team is going to draw a card with a question like, what color is this thing typically? And then the spirit will write one letter at a time like an old fashioned Ouija board or a new fashioned Milton Bradley Ouija board. And uh, they will spell out what they want their mediums to receive, but only their team's mediums know the actual question. And those mediums, as soon as they think they know what answer is being written, they yell silencio. And that makes the spirit stop writing. So um, one of my favorite things about Decrypto is that it's all about giving the opponents as little information as possible, which makes it very strategic and you can go give it more levels than than it seems like at face value or at least the rules convey that there is so that's what I'm looking forward to with Ghost Rider I'm really pumped about this game yeah I can tell this is gonna be exciting um, you know it's one of those things where I like games like this because you get Halloween all year long you know this is a very Halloweeny game but you know who needs Halloween when you can talk to spirits on any day of the year what else do you have a taste for? You know what tastes good are foods from the night market. And this game is actually called Night Market. Um, it's designed by Adam Zwayne, who actually lived in Taiwan. So the game is 
based on the night markets of Taiwan. And Adam actually hired cultural consultants to help develop this game, which is really cool. Important. You're going to be acquiring different foods from the city in order to place them in your night market because you want to attract customers, right? So you're cooking all kinds of dishes um, and customers are gonna pay more for those specialty dishes that your shop um, has. And at the end of the day, whoever's made the most money and created the most sales is gonna win night market. What I really like about the spec is it combines a spatial element and worker placement, two of my favorite game mechanisms. So you're trying to manage your resources to maintain your customer loyalty. They need to come back and buy your food, right? Or else you're not gonna make enough money to win the game. So you have a limited time to shop for your ingredients and get them ready for the market's opening. This game is gonna be a good one. I really enjoy worker placement games and I love food, Becca. So Night Market's got my Insta back. I love something that integrates a menu and you're thinking about a real world application of like, ooh, ooh, this would be really good together. And then, uh, and also meeples have chef hats. So what's not to love? So from the night market, where are we going next, Becca? Okay, you had a big expansive game with many pieces and many moving parts and I want to tell you about a little tiny wallet sized game. This is Death Valley by Kevin Ellenberg. This game came about from a contest about designing games with only 18 cards. I've recently driven through Death Valley and, wow, it's very dead looking, honestly, but this game makes it look very beautiful. <laughs> and um, I'm a big fan of things that can fit into a small package that you can easily travel with and be able to play a game anywhere with friends. And it's, um, it's a really nice push your luck game. In Death Valley, you have 18 cards. You pull them out of a tiny wallet sized carrying case. You shuffle them up and you can do one of three things. Either you can take the card that is face up and put it into your personal tableau. You can take the card on top of the deck and put it into your personal tableau, or you can rest. That's it. So there's 18 cards and it's a very quick game, but seems very charming with beautiful art and really immersive locationization. Is that a thing? Yeah, I love games like this. That whole like, should I roll or should I stop rolling now? And Death Valley, it looks really cool because I, I've i also driven through Death Valley. There's not much to see there, Becca, honestly. Not much, maybe some salt flats. Yeah, but I would totally take this game just to go out to Death Valley. And like, how awesome would that be? Play Death Valley in Death Valley. That is on point. And it is the topic of the competition because it was create a card game about a location with only 18 cards. So there you go. Yeah, I love Button Shy. Uh, their games are so accessible and so affordable. Um, and this contest that they do, it's produced some really cool games, including one from our friend Elizabeth Hargrave, designer Wingspan. Uh, she won the contest a few years ago with Tussie Mussy. That's amazing. Yeah, what a great launching platform for new game artists and, and game developers to get this opportunity to really show their stuff and be able to get published. Next is Prosperity, a game of artisanal tea blending. This is designed by Avon Gonzalez uh, with art by them and Jose Pimienta. In Prosperity, you want to be the most prestigious tea shop in your neighborhood. And what that entails is sourcing ingredients to blend them into a variety of teas. And you accomplish this through card drafting and set collection. And what I find really interesting about it is when you're filling orders, it's actually sort of semi-cooperative. You can work with uh, your opponents to fulfill these orders. Uh, they do get a little uh, piece of the action as well, but you're eventually gonna complete all these orders and it, um, the game's pretty quick. It's about 20 to 45 minutes for three to six players. And as they reach different stretch goals, they're gonna include a two player variant and also a solo variant. I love that if you go for a high enough tier, you also get actual tea pouches and a tea strainer because I mean, I like to get my groceries along with my games. Right? I mean, it's it kills two birds with one stone, folks. This looks like a really simple game. I mean, they give it a difficulty level of one out of five. So I think it's one that I definitely teach to my nine-year-old niece and uh, one that would be easy to teach to someone who isn't in for a heavy game, but in for a beautiful game. Yeah, agreed. And this is one of those games where you can bring it to non-gamers who like teas, but they probably won't, maybe they're not thinking about playing games, but hey, let's Let's have a cup of tea, let's sit down, pour ourselves a cup, and hey, we might as well play a game about teas while we're sipping our teas, right? Change of gears to a new type of futurism that you have not even imagined before. Or maybe you have, I don't know what you dream about. Probably teas and board games. And robots. 
and robots. <laughs> Well, this has nothing to do with robots, but it does have to do with futurism. This is Coyote and Crow. This is an RPG game set in a near future and based around native cultures if America had never been colonized. This RPG is set around uh, a future climate catastrophe and um, about the different factions and the worlds that could grow up within that, that headspace. I was drawn to the topic of this RPG game, but I could not look away when I press play on this video. The art style is incredible. The colors are bold and vibrant and just the music and the trailer made me think these people know what they are doing with design. Yeah, this looks absolutely awesome and when I saw it too, Becca, mind blown, right? It's just looks beautiful and I love the respect that they've paid to the native cultures. That actually remind me of a little bit of Spirit Island, right? Where they're taking things and flipping things around. But this actually takes it to the next level because of the whole sci-fi futuristic thing. Again, mind blown a second time this looks so much fun and i love what how they're coming about this and taking this to a new level of gameplay yeah i think coyote and crow could spawn a whole new genre of rpg and of just imagination yeah and you can you know you can take this in so many different directions and again it's a way to include um more people who are going to be drawn by the theme, and I think that's a good thing. It's getting more people into playing RPGs. I wanna play this ASAP. Something super awesome is you can get early access to this game on Roll20.net if you back it, and it rolls using a D12 system, which is a pretty unique system, so I'm excited to see how that plays out. Oh my gosh, that's my three. We're done here. We did it, Ruel. What about some honorable mentions, Becca? Of course, honorable mentions, Ruel. What else caught your eye? Well, believe it or not, Becca, this one has nothing to do with food. <laughs> this is Letters to Margaret. It's a crossword graphic novel. This graphic novel has the same series of events uh, told from two different characters' perspectives, and each one has solvable crosswords by Mike Selinker and Andy Kravis. This is charming. I am a huge crossword fan, so this very much appeals to me. Uh, I love that there's a story in between all the crossword puzzles. All right, one more, then we're out, folks. I gotta do an honorable mention to Sabobotage. This is a charming card game. It is set building based around boba tea. Um, and I really just got really excited because I saw my buddy Chuck Ma, who I did improv with for years, in their commercial, and it is hilarious. It's a very funny sketch for their video. They fund it easily with something as charming as this, and um, they really emphasized, the creator, Eric Chen, really emphasized how important it is to build relationships at the table and the value of, of how games do that, which of course is something that you and I advocate for all the time. So, uh, love the video and got a shout out to Bobotage. Yeah, and what better way to forge those relationships at the table than by drinking boba and also playing a game. Thanks so much for watching this week's Good Looking Kickstarters. We hope you found something nice and tasty. I'm Becca Scott, and that's Ruel Gaviola. Say something hilarious. Um, something hilarious. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to keep the conversation going, hop on over to our Discord. You can find the link below. You can also find a link to all of the games we've talked about today. We'll see you next time.